Hello there, boys and girls. My name is Sid Alpha, and we're coming together to ask each other a very simple but yet also important question yet once again. Is it worth it? Today we're taking a look at Sword Coast Legends. Uh, this game was released on October 19th. Uh, the developer was in space, and this was published by Digital Extremes. Now, this game, Sword Coast Legends, is done very much in a similar style to the old uh, Neverwinter Nights and Neverwinter Nights 2 style game formats so it's very much a throwback to that style and genre of games that uh, Wizards of the Coast did um, way back when over a, a decade ago somewhere around there I'd have to check actual dates and it, to be honest nobody really cares about those games at this point in time Sword Coast Legends has it had a lot going for it and a lot of things not going for it. Uh, it, and it. My initial very, very first impressions of this game were extremely mixed, even within my own head. And uh, be, because of that, it's taken me a bit longer to actually get the uh, video out for this game because I wanted to make sure I gave it a, an honest, fair shake, to be perfectly honest with you guys. And... Uh, Judging from a lot of the different aspects and content of the game, that's not something I was really able to do with just playing the game for a one or two hour period. So I did take some time, and of course work got in the way, so that slowed down my review as well. I'm about uh, 12 hours into the game now, and uh, I believe that's given me a large enough sample set to be able to adequately relate to you guys what you can expect in this video game. But before we go any further with that, let's jump into the options menu and see what we're taking a look at with there. Okay, boys and girls, here we are at the main screen. One thing you do have to remember about this main screen is, is that it is required for you to sign up for an account for this game before it will even let you get to this screen, which is not something that I am at all comfortable with and I do not like being forced to do. Uh, but before we go too much further into that, we'll take a quick look at the options. We have gameplay settings, hide helmet, tutorial on new characters, uh, show player tutorial messages, subtitles, gore, overhead markers, interactable highlighting, auto saving, tooltip, delay, auto add consumables to quick bar. That can actually get a little irritating. You may want to turn that off. Uh, auto remote, or auto remove auto added consumables from quick bar, camera nudge, lock cursor, Okay, now this is one thing, camera nudge here with the mouse button, this is off by default, and uh, that makes the controls feel a little bit more janky than they necessarily need to be, uh, as the only other options are to have it locked to the character or to use the WASD keys. Uh, disable Windows Start key, no, we don't want to do that. We have the pause menu, allow pause and then hosted multiplayer games. General pause options, DM. Because you are actually, this does have some customizable uh, things that we'll get into here in a little while. Uh, then you have the graphics uh, resolutions. All the standard resolutions, uh, no no 4K resolution or anything like that. Full screen on or off, graphics quality, which of course is set to custom because I've tinkered with it. Uh, full screen post effects. And all your standard stuff. Now, texture and shadow quality only go as high as high. Um, Shadow Amount Ultra, Shadow Distance, Anisotropic Filtering and Anti-Aliasing. Again, no idea what type of uh, filtering or anti-aliasing is used. Audio, all your standard audio options, controls. And these are rebindable. 
which thank God for that. I left these at the, def at the default level, but the control scheme is fairly janky overall, and you are going to want to customize your controls to make them feel a little bit more comfortable for yourself. Now we have the Dungeon Master, which I still have not really tampered around with this. We'll go to Create Edit Module. Which there are some that you can download and uh, uh, tinker around with. And this is for uh, customizing and creating your own campaign. Which is uh, a ni actually a nice little bit of innovation. I, I do I kind of appreciate that. However, the overall game is the main thing we need to concentrate on, not the uh, the ability to create your own content or anything like that. I wanted to point it out because it is a nice feature to have, but overall, that's not really the purpose of this uh, this this review. The purpose of this review is to determine uh, overall gameplay and uh, uh, feature set functionality, and to determine whether or not this game is worth the money that they're asking for here. Uh, granted, a lot of people will argue, well, you can't really determine the game is worth it without checking out uh, this whole thing here. I was like, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because uh, there's a lot of things that can play into the fact of whether or not a game is worth your time or your money. And if the overall game itself is, f is fun or is not fun, the added feature sets will expand upon that. Uh, whereas, whereas the added feature sets themselves don't necessarily create base value for the game. At least not that, that's not how I feel. So just so you guys know, when this game, uh, even up to a few months before this game launched, there was actually a fairly massive hype train surrounding uh, this game as a lot of people were really looking forward to uh, seeing it come out and being able to get into it and start playing it because it's been a while since we've had a decent uh, Wizards of the Coast style uh, D&D game with uh, first play uh, first you know single person storyline content and things of that nature uh, Neverwinter Nights 2 was the to my knowledge the most recent playable game uh, that had that had that type those type of feature sets that we were looking for. Unfortunately, the hype train kind of fell flat on its face a little bit. Uh, even now, uh, the game is getting extremely mixed reviews, and a lot of people are either hating it or loving it. Uh, so, just to, just so you guys are clear, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, what I expect from a video game that is asking this much money, $40, which is a not insignificant amount. Uh, it's not the price of a full AAA title, so of course we're not going to expect full AAA quality out of this. Um, but at the same time, this isn't the price range of your standard indie game, which is usually in the $5 to $25 price range. So we do expect a fair amount more than what you would see with an indie game but not quite as much as what you would get out of AAA. And it would be nice if we got a AAA quality game out of this. I'd be willing to pay the $60 if they were to take the added extra effort to be able to make it look nice and polished with, you know, current generation graphics and things of that nature. But let's take a look at uh, some of the categories that I, too, tend to list uh, when I'm taking a look at video games of the $40 price point and above. Uh, one would be decent graphics. Does this thing have graphics that'll be able to hold up. Obviously, it's not the price of a AAA title, like I said before, so we're not going to expect full AAA graphics out of this, so it's not going to look amazing, but it does need to look at least decent, and does it manage to do that? No, it does not. Uh, this game has the graphics uh, graphic set of a uh, video game that I would expect to be closer to a video game of about half its, half its price than what it's asking for. Uh, next would be a decent story. Uh, as this is, uh, you know, they, they were really they were really building up the uh, the campaign mode in this, and what you can do with the uh, with the overall storyline and things of that nature. So, does it have a decent story? 
yeah, actually, it's so far it's not that bad of a story. It's it's uh, decently well voice acted. Uh, the storyline is, while not super in depth, uh, the these these this genre of D and D games have never really had super in depth storylines. Uh, you know, they have a basic precept, something where it's the type of thing where obviously it would be kind of like a a campaign that you would be playing at home with, uh, with a tabletop D&D campaign which you know that's that's what we kind of expect from these type of games so as far as the story mode goes I'm willing to give it a pass because uh, because of the voice acting quality is 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 good if not excellent it is at least good and uh, the storyline is what we come to expect now the gameplay mechanics is also another big huge one uh, that's, that's, that one is probably one of the most important aspects of it is, uh, it's playability and, uh, also it's replayability as well, but we'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, the, the overall gameplay mechanics, uh, does it, you know, does it play well? Is it smooth? Is it buggy? Is it glitchy? Does it crash? Um, how are the interfaces and things of that nature all things that I tend to take a look at and so overall before we before I actually demonstrate some of that stuff for you guys I'm gonna have to tell you that the controls are fairly clunky and somewhat counterintuitive in nature and there are a lot of basic things that feel left out that really really should have been there like uh, some core map functionality and things of that type are just not quite there and not as good as what I what I've come to expect and uh, they they just feel to be missing some stuff and also with the overall gameplay the controls are like I said before very counterintuitive uh, the key rebinding of course will be able to help out with this quite a bit however with their standard feature set right out of the box it's you know some things that you expect to be able to left click and right click on different things to do to have different actions that sort of functionality isn't there and uh you know like the mouse being able to scroll around on the screen using your mouse that mode is that that function is actually off by default and uh, they expect you to use the WASD keys or by leaving the camera focused on the character and so when your character moves the camera moves with you and of course with a game like this you're going to want to be able to look around and uh, even with the functionality of being able to scroll around and move the map around uh, that's actually not clearly explained in the game and uh, but we'll, we'll like I said we'll get into that part a little bit later so the overall gameplay mechanics as a general whole fairly clunky and not you know granted I was kind of half expecting this uh, beans. This is the you know a Wizards of the Coast game. Their control mechanics have never been really all that great. Let's be honest. But I was expecting them to be able to learn from the, those mistakes of the past games and be able to present us with something with a fair amount better functionality than what we're given here. And of course, the one other category that I do tend to look at is customization. Uh, of course, you are able to cu fully customize the look of your character. I just had a light go out. Actually, it just dimmed itself. That's interesting. Um, and that just totally broke my train of thought. Uh, character customization. You are able to fairly customize your character. And, uh, of course, it does have the DM mode. You're actually able to create your own fully fleshed out campaigns to be able to play with your friends or people you don't know or you can play through them by yourself it's your choice so there is a good amount of customization here and the customization feature set here really does give you a very good amount of replayability which is something that you're really looking for in a game of this price range and above is the definite replayability aspect and I think it is there uh, the campaign mode the even the story mode it uh, it it will probably be there to a certain extent because of course you do have um, a great many different character classes and styles that you can uh, use to go through the game and there may be some areas where you might skip over some some side missions and things like that where you want may want to go back through and play with a different character and and do those later on and of course 
the the uh, again we're right back to the being able to create your own campaigns, which it adds a lot. It really does. So the customization is there, the gameplay mechanics are not, the decent story is there, and the decent graphics are not. So as you can see, as I'm kind of going through, I don't I don't usually create a checklist for that kind of thing, but this is the basic overall view that I take with most games to be able to relate whether or not I think it's worth your money and time or not. And uh, that that ties in very closely to what most people have done with their reviews. Their their reviews on Steam are extremely mixed, and even what I'm finding while I'm looking through this game are also extremely mixed. That's part of the reason why I took a lot longer than I normally do in being able to get a video out to you guys. Um, so with we'll just stop my rambling there for at this point and we'll get into so you can act, you guys can actually take a look and see the overall game mechanics the graphics things of that nature uh, if you haven't bought the game already and uh, we'll take it from there okay so first things off I already have a character created but I'm going to build another one just so we can show you guys what the character creation is like okay so we have gender male or female and this will give you some ideas to the graphics okay we have class we got rogue wizard paladin ranger fighter cleric Do a ranger. I like rangers. Alright, race, half elf, human, elf, dwarf, halfling. Half elf is pretty much the standard. Human, sub race. <laughs> human or human variant. So not super customizable. Not as many options as you would you would uh, naturally see in as as far as a uh, D and D campaign, but good enough. We'll do a criminal background. Of course, we have the skin tones and the complexion. As you can see, it starts to look kind of ridiculous after a while. But the uh, yeah, the the customizability of your character, you can do a pretty decent job with it. And we have weapons. Yeah, you have, uh, it's a point by system, so there's no rolling, um, which I kind of, it, it's fine. I would prefer they actually gave you the option whether uh, to do a point by or to uh, uh, do rolls, because a point by system is a little bit more limited, and it prevents you from, you know, Granted, it prevents you from getting a massively overpowered character, but it also prevents you the ability of getting some super high stats while still having some fairly average other stats. Uh, As you can see, you can leave your stats like that, and it, you can you can end up with uh, some really low level stats, and one average stat, and then three decent stats. Which, of course, you know that's that's something that I really do not like with point buy systems.
And trust me, for your main character, you're going to want some decent charisma. No matter what. And in, in games like this, you're always going to want decent charisma. Now here we go with the ability points screen. And... It does... This is actually not... This screen is not bad. So there's plenty to choose from here. <laughs> I do love that. So character creation, you know, this is pretty standard fare for character creation. It's, it's functional enough. Uh, the customization, it's got a lot of customization there, but the graphics don't really back up your selections, so it leaves everything looking a little cartoonish, a little dated. Um, we're going to actually jump in with... Uh, uh, with my character. I always tend to name my, my female characters Alicia for some reason. And here's where you have, you can either play your story campaign by yourself or you can have friends play with you. Which you can, you know, invite people from your Steam list to play the game along with you, which is a nice theme. And we'll get into the gameplay real quick here. Just a brief amount. I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time on this. I know the video is already starting to get somewhat long overall. And I don't want it to get too long in the tooth. And just make you guys bored beyond all reason. That's not the purpose of this. Okay, so this is, now you can, you can swivel around like this, but there's no way for you to be able to change your up and down camera angle. As you can see, you can try it, there's no way to. You can zoom in, that's about as far as you can get. Let's move out into an open area. You can't right click to move, you have to left click to move. And without having that uh, mouse option turned on by default, you do have to use the WAS and D keys. Or you can double click on your photo to. What is it you require? At your service. Lock the camera right into away. place along with it. And this is really as close as you can get to your, your characters. So not a lot of zoom capability there. Now the map. Now this is something that was not explained to me. Was uh, you could zoom in on the map, but for the longest time, it felt to me that there was no way to move the map around. And uh, the reason be the WASD keys don't work. Pushing with a mouse doesn't work. You have to hold down your scroller. Your, uh, you know, your third mouse button to be able to move the map around. And uh, the, ma the map in this one actually pauses the game. You can set waypoints, but there's no way to give instruction to your characters on where to go from the map, which is a feature set that was very much present in uh, 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 Baldur's Gate 2 and uh, Icewind Dale games and uh, Neverwinter Nights games and things like that, which makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to get around in areas uh, without having to pan around a lot and things like that or waste a lot of time with clicking. And it's it's... A real shame that that particular feature set was uh, it was removed and is not a part of this game as it really takes some away. We have the inventory screen, fairly standard. I actually have a lot of stuff I need to get rid of. 
And also, apparently with this, there's no... Oh, apparently there is a weight cap, but it's like a party weight a party weight limit of uh, total equipment that you can store. And of course, you have uh, weapon slots one and two, and uh, so that's fairly standard fare with what you expect with games I like can do this. That. Of course, right away. Of course, at once. And here's your. Luskin map, which again, without knowing where that scroll is, which was not explained to me, of course, I may have been tired and missed it. Uh, it's entirely possible. And you have the world map, and you also have the adventurer's camp, which is very similar. The way they did, did this is very similar in a way to uh, uh, Dragon Age Origins, where you go back to your camp and uh, have discussions with your companions and learn more about them. However, this is, of course, what do you need? A lot more limited. Don't be a stranger. A lot more limited in scope. I mean, a lot more As limited. Right and of course, you have to. There's no right clicking in this game. It's all At left once. mouse button or the middle one right for moving around on the map. That. Once, right away. Okay, apparently clicking on the adventurer's journal does fuck all. Nothing. Of course. At once. And then of course combat might be uh what you could expect. As you wish. And of course you do have to click on an exit point to be able to travel somewhere. No, I've actually been there. There's nothing left there to kill. Let's travel to Neverwinter Wood. Oh, and then you choose which, which companions go along with you. And uh, again, this is all very, very, very basic. So we'll want uh, the cleric with us, and the rogue, and the wizard. And even when you select, this is one thing that they did do, is even though you um, select certain party members, even parties that don't, that aren't, party members that aren't there with you, they have a uh, sort of communication stone, so you don't miss any dialogue options or things like that, which also kind of, you know, it messes a little bit with the overall replayability of the game, which I don't like. Main thing is, I'm just trying to find something to fight to show you guys the combat a little bit. Here we go. Here's a black bear. Let's fight a black bear. As you can see, there's going to be a lot of pausing and... So the overall combat mechanics of this game are, again, fairly similar to uh, Dragon Age Origins and things like that. And they do kind of remind me very much of an MMO. Which is not something I, I I'm wish. not a fan of that style of uh, game mechanics. So as you can see, the graphics of this game are very, very basic. There's not much depth or detail anywhere to be found. Um, Cutscenes still use these these self same character models, and overall, it's just as you wish. Not what I would expect. I mean, right this would be... I suppose it would be appropriate given the size of the game for a $40, $40, $40 price tag. But overall, you know, I was just 
I was really hoping for more. I really was. Because it's been a long time since we've had a game like this, and uh, I was hoping it was going to be great and fantastic and amazing and blow everyone's minds. And this is what we get. Something that just feels kind of... To be honest, the overall game mechanics feel kind of half-assed. And it really is half-assed, guys, when, when you get in when you start really getting down and taking a look at it. I mean, that was just the briefest glimpse of everything. But the overall game mechanics and all that are just... They just don't feel like there's a good solid flow and everything just feels way too just disjointed. And uh, uh, it, just, it just doesn't work for me. It really doesn't. So overall... Just, uh, and I know I've said this a couple of times, just like with everyone else, I've felt very torn about this game on whether to like it or not like it. But as, as much as I want to say I'll leave the choice up to you, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you whether or not I feel this game is worth your time and worth your money and uh, allow you enough material to be able to kind of uh, make a more informed decision about this game if you haven't already purchased it on your own and so because of the the fact that it's basically pretty much an even 50 50 split for me because it's so so disparate on what is good of the, about the game and what is not uh, that I have to say overall for the the question is it is is Sword Coast Legends worth your time and worth your $40 I have to say because I'm so torn. No, it's really not. And that is because it, it, the game is kind of let down. The graphics are not as good as I was expect them to. Let me go back. The graphics are not as good as I would expect them to be. The gameplay mechanics are horrible. The customization, there's a decent level of customization, but the overall uh, base engine of the game does detract from that a certain amount, as does the uh, the overall game mechanics. Um, the the graphics just aren't there. Uh, however, the story mode does it. It's a decent D and D campaign story. It's something that you would be playing sitting down with your friends. I think uh, for a lot of people it would be, um, but also at the same time that's kind of a drawback because when you're playing a video game from the professionals. You expect a certain amount of sl at least slightly higher quality than a RPG campaign that you would sit down and play at tabletop with your friends. You know, so you would expect a more in-depth and more rich and flavorful campaign than what you're getting here. It's good, it's serviceable, the voice acting is passable. Overall, it's, it's an okay game. And for $40, I might give it a pass... But I can't. I'm trying to look out for you guys. Uh, so if you do, if you haven't bought the game already, and you do decide you want to pick it up, wait for a sale or wait for the price to come down. Because at forty dollars, I just don't feel that it's 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 worth your money at that point. I really don't. Sorry, guys. I was really excited for this game. I was super hyped to be able to play it, and then it was, it was kind of a letdown. So that's where we are with that. Um, so once again, that was Sword Coast Legends, ladies and gentlemen, by Space and published by Digital Extreme. Uh, again, it is $40 or your regional equivalent on Steam. Please wait for a sale if you're going to pick this game up. It's not worth the 40 bucks. Maybe at the 30 or $25 price point, it'll be worthwhile. But right now... I just really don't think so. Uh, not with the graphics level and the controls and all that. It's just, it really detracts from the overall experience of the game, and it's it's hard to have fun with it. It is. It's kind of hard to have fun, which is not something you want from a video game. I've said this time and time again. You shouldn't be trying to find the fun in the game. The game should just be fun. That's why it's a game. And. Basically, that's why I can't recommend it to you guys. I'm sorry. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and take off because I've got a lot of work to do still tonight and uh, hopefully get some videos out to you guys on a more regular basis. Uh, the past few weeks have been just crazy insane and I'm really, really sorry about that, guys. Please bear with me. It will stabilize, I promise you that. So, once again, Sword Coast Legends and my name is Sid Alpha. I'll see you guys next time. Hey folks, Sid Alpha here. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. If you want to check out some other First Impressions videos, feel free to click on the link on the left. If you're interested in staying more up to date with what's happening in the PC gaming community, feel free to click on the link to your right. The subscribe button is down at the bottom. Please show your support and punch that evil thing as hard as you can. And once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.